Hello everyone, I am back to do another video today. If you haven't seen my last video, I had mentioned that I had had jaw surgery. I'd like to report that I am all healed up now, and since I am healed, I can now do videos again, and I can speak clearly to you guys. If you hadn't gotten that update, you can check out the last video, I'll put that in the link. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. So I thought a good way to get back into my videos would be to start on this wonderful street light here in my wonderful backdrop that I've made for this video. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So today we will be looking at my American Electric 13 triple zero early 60s 175 watt mercury vapor street light. So I'm not entirely acclimated with American Electric's uh, early history, but as you guys know, as of uh, 2020, they make a lot of different kinds of streetlights. And throughout the 90s and 2000s, they've made a lot of popular fixtures that everyone probably knows of, such as the American Electric 115 and 125 and the 327. This street light right here is pretty much the ancestor of the 115 as this street light was made before the ITT American Electric 13. I don't know when these street lights came out, but they are very, very interesting. They did come out in the early 60s and alongside the street light, the 00015, which was a 400 watt mercury vapor light, and the 00017, which was a 1000 watt mercury vapor light, were also produced alongside this one. Now, of course, with this being a small luminaire, this luminaire came in pretty much every standard wattage that you could think of. Um, I'm pretty sure this did come in 100 watts mercury vapor, and this definitely did come in 250 watts mercury vapor, and I'm sure that those would be very hard to find. Now that we know some basic history on this streetlight, let's go ahead and kind of just look at the outside of the streetlight. So as I pan the camera here, you can see the streetlight has a very nice, sleek design, pretty streamlined for its time. And one thing you'll notice about that design, it kind of looks like a Westinghouse OV-15. But that light didn't really come out until the 70s. But if you also look at the bottom part of the door here, it kind of has that lip that comes down, which actually looks very reminiscent to the 115s that they still currently make of as today. And I don't know if this streetlight ever came in any other colors, but as you can see, this one has a matte silver finish, and this streetlight right here was restored. And I was able to repaint it pretty much in the same exact uh, color it had, and it is really, really nice. The metal is actually pretty good um, quality for its time. Um, it's not super thick, but it's not super thin. But I would say the aluminum casting on this on the streetlight is pretty well done. There's no rough edges, and yeah, you can see the bottom of the door here. It is also super nice, and you can see that little lip detail. It really does look a lot like a stretched out 115 if you really look closely at it. But yeah, really cool. And I'm going to go ahead and lay it on its back real quick so we can see the lovely logo here. Now with the streetlight having a silver paint finish, it's very thin, so I definitely have a, I'm trying to be careful as to not scratch it, especially since I've restored it. And yeah, you would just want to always be careful with streetlights that are painted like this. So here is the logo. You can see American Electric put their lovely logo on here. It is embossed very, very nice and very, very crisp for on the refractor door. So when you look at it from the street, you can see who made it. And I really wish they did this type of thing nowadays. Um, they really don't put their branding on the streetlights anymore, especially their LED stuff. So yeah, I really do appreciate that detail. And it is very unique compared to the logos that you'd find back then on other lights, such as uh, General Electric street lights and uh, Westinghouse's lights. Um, some other companies like Revere had their um, logo embossed in nice big letters, but 
I really don't know of any other company that did it this nicely, and I'd say American Electric definitely put the final touch on the streetlight that they needed to make it nice. So yeah, I really appreciate that design. Yeah, you can see the hinge back here. It's They have some pretty thick uh, pieces of metal molded in there, I guess to make this nice and strong. Pretty nice, and as we go up here you can see some drip points. And here is our lens. I'm going to go ahead and flip it back over and take a look at that photo cell socket too while we're at it. Here is our photo cell socket here. It might look kind of uh, plain on the sides here and on the top, but if we turn it around here, you'll see that there is a special screw right here. And basically what this is for is to pivot your photo cell socket. So if you loosen this screw right here, you can see that photo cell socket popped up. Now that it's popped up, we can go ahead and turn it in any position that we need to so that it'll face the sun correctly. And then once you're done doing that, all you got to do is go ahead and push that, screw that screw back in. And then the socket is secure. The photo cell that uh, came with this light, it's just a basic uh, 2003 DTL. It was actually a blue photo cell. However, this uh, photo cell has had quite a lot of weathering and it wasn't really very blue anymore. So I went ahead and repainted it a metallic pink. I actually wanted to paint this a metallic blue to make it look a little bit more retro, but it does look pretty old style, um, I guess, with this color. They don't unfortunately sell metallic blue paint if you go to Home Depot or Menards. So if anyone can tell me where to find a metallic colored spray paint that would be really cool because I'd actually repaint this photo cell. And lastly on the street light here you got a spot where you can put a level and I really do like these older levels that they put on these street lights and a lot of the newer ones they'll put like a little level ball under the street light and it's really useless because it's usually on the door and you can't really put the street light up correctly uh, onto the slip fitter arm when uh, your lights close so I like that they actually have a level up here so that you can you know have a level that you can see and you can still have the door off so I really like that unfortunately this little detail really wasn't on a lot of other street lights and it really didn't stick long with American Electric's lights so yeah it's a bummer but I really like it and it's cool if you look at it it's a nice T shape and that emboss is really nicely molded all right, let's go ahead now and open up this street light. So basically, like every other street light, there should be a latch on the front here, and there is. You got a little latch here. Just pull back on that, and your street light should open right down. And so get that door off. Pretty much just slides up once you get halfway open, and it should just nicely come out. So yeah. Now we got that off. Let's go ahead and look at the inside of the refractor door. Now one thing that made me extremely happy when I got the street light was that it was in really good shape on the inside. A lot of times you'll find bugs in these. Sometimes if these have uh, bad capacitors, they'll leak and then you'll get sticky stains and corrosion forming in the metal. However, um, that wasn't the case with uh, this light at all. Um, this did have bugs in it. It was a little dirty, but when I cleaned it up, I got down to some really nice fresh metal and you can just see that this thing is literally almost brand new and these uh, 00015's um, they're not super hard to find but they aren't very common so it's nice to have one of these in good shape now of course you can see in here um, you can see those nice hinge molds are very clean the aluminum casting really is finished well it's the metal is also the, the mass of the metal is very thick too so really nice if you look like Right here you can see some drip holes like we saw on the outside. They probably put this lip right here actually to help that water drain, which is a good thing. So, yep, that's for drainage if there's any moisture or water in there. And you got some latches here basically to get your reflector out here. You just twist them, I think, to the side. Yep, twist them to the side like that. Or you can twist them in too, I think. It doesn't really matter. There's a little spring. You can kind of see there's a little spring right there. If you pull up on it, sometimes 
it'll come out. There we go. Of course, there's uh, two little slots up here that help keep it in, and those are actually just pieces of metal that are screwed in. But once you undo those little things in the back, those little uh, latches in the back, your refractor is out. Before we get into the refractor, let's go ahead and look at the inside of that hinge. You can pretty much see that American Electric, um, even back in the 60s, had the same hinge design. It's basically, you just pull it and there's a spring mechanism that's tied in with the uh, latch. And there's the key right here, and this one's just kind of screwed down, but yeah, it's pretty basic. But American Electric definitely has kept that the same since they've started making their street lights. So yeah, really awesome. And now, let's go ahead and look at the, ref the refractor here. Now, I really do love this refractor. If anyone's familiar with the ITT-13 models, they actually utilize this same refractor. And they also have a four-way version of this uh, refractor as well. However, I don't know if those were being made yet during uh, this light's production. I will say that this refractor has um, pretty much stayed the same um, since it was uh, first made. Um, you can see pretty much looks like the ITT25 refractor, but it's just a smaller version. It is really nice in design. I do like that it looks like that uh, ITT25 refractor. You can see the lovely uh, patterns here. It's a pretty standard lens, um, but it is really good. And if I can flip it the right way, you can see that they proudly have the American Electric uh, logo embossed on the glass lens and you can also see it says street view really really nice you can see the inside here has a really nice pattern and on the back here they have those nice refractor details that Holofane seems to do on every single lens they've ever made so yeah pretty cool and like most glass lenses from this time it is molded very well. It is finished very well. There's no air bubbles, there's no little, uh, seams or anything in the glass. It is nice and clean and clear and mold. And one thing I actually almost forgot to mention, I don't know if the later versions have this, but you can actually see there's a t number two there in uh, Roman numeral. So this is a two-way lens. I'm sure a lot of you guys knew that, but um, yeah pretty nice lens. I don't know if they ever got rid of that when they made their ITT-13s in the 70s, but other than that, like, this lens has pretty much stayed the same, but it is definitely really nice, and I actually like to compare this with a, um, an ITT version someday. Now that we've seen that, let's go ahead and look at the rim. You can see it says Holofane on it. Enderol. There's some serial numbers and some patenting dates and you can actually see a real year right there it says 1963 so now that I see that I'm pretty sure that this American Electric triple zero over here was made in 1963 so that's actually really awesome to see that there is a real date on that if you keep going there's a couple other little numbers on the room here but if we go on this end of the room, you can see that it says American Electric. And then there's also some cat numbers. Now that we've taken a look at this, let's go ahead and bring that street light back over and take a look at the insides and see what they have to offer. And again, like I had mentioned on the door, this is a very, very clean light. Um, a lot of these street lights are usually not in this good a shape. A lot of the ones I got in Cincinnati, they were pretty clean and not really too corroded, but they were always very dirty and had a lot of stuff stuck in them. This one actually came from a small town outside Toledo. And uh, this one, even though it's a little bit more up north, it's very clean. So I'm really, really happy to see that. But, and I, I promise you, I didn't sandblast this or anything. This is how it looked when I cleaned it. So it is great. But anyway... Let's go ahead and look at our slip fitter here. Pretty much your slip fitter is pretty standard. I think there's really only one step you can go on and it's really these steps and then this is kind of where it hits the arm. 
that's not really any pivoting or anything I think you can really do here. However, um, if we look right here, you can see the lovely stainless steel bolts that they used for these slip fitter brackets. And these are some pretty basic uh, slip fitter brackets here. Nothing too special, but they're good quality. Moving up here, you can see our terminal block. It is a Bakelite plastic, or Bakelite, whatever you would prefer to call it. And it is mounted pretty uh, pretty nicely on this uh, angled bracket here. Now, I don't know what's up with uh, this, but I really like that and how it uh, straightens this thing out, so pretty nice. Um, if you've noticed, um, there is no capacitor in this light. This is a 240 only light. That, which means this is a constant wattage ballast, meaning it does not require a capacitor to run in that there is enough coils on that transformer for it to get to the correct voltage the mercury vapor lamp needs to use. But if there was a capacitor in here, I would assume it would probably go right here. As you can see, there's some nice curvature in there. Um, however, I'm not entirely sure as to how it would mount as there isn't really any screws. I guess it would mount to this screw, but you know, who knows. Under that terminal block you can actually see your uh, photo cell socket there. Pretty nice. And pretty much from the terminal block here you can see all the wires that do all their mercury vapor type stuff. Of course since this is a 240 volt light you would use two hots and no neutral. Now this is a photo cell light and you'd think that photo cell uses uh, neutral but when these newer street lights came out around this time, and this is something I didn't know, the photocells were built, and I don't know if you can see it on this one. Um, no, the stickers worn off. But these photocells, even some of the older ones that were around, were uh, varying watt, could handle various wattages. So I believe this one can handle like 103 to like uh, 280 volts or something. So as long as it's in that voltage range, this photocell um, will work. So you can put two hots on here, which basically one of those hots would probably go into neutral, and this would still function normally. So I don't entirely know how that works right now, but I do know that works, and we will see that in a little bit when you go to turn it on. But yeah, I thought that was quite interesting, because on some of the lights uh, that I would gotten from Cincinnati, if you actually look at my M400 uh, 1960s video I did a couple years back now, you'll see that there's, uh, in that video it's 240, but there's two hots in a neutral that's um, provided there for that photo cell and that neutral yeah the neutral like I said goes to that photo cell so pretty interesting how they got this set up and cool to know that works so yeah oh, this is all the original wiring here this is a splice block that goes up to the photo cell socket um, something did go on here though at one time um, this wire here and this wire here both connect to each other However, they were cut and spliced with a wire nut. Um, I don't know when that was done, but I went ahead and undid that because the connection really wasn't that good. And the wire that comes out of this transformer, you might kind of be able to see it. It's really thin, just a thin piece of solid copper or aluminum or, you know, coated wire. And I don't want that to break, so I went ahead and I added a uh, plug connection here to the light, so it's not completely original. I have this plug connection here, this spade pin that goes into this enclosed sp spade plug, and those just connect my wires up. And it makes it very easy to disconnect everything when I need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda leave that for now as I am trying to record. You can see our transformer here, that nice, uh, small, constant wattage transformer and this lovely brass bracket that they put across the uh, across the inside of the light here to support that. I really like that. And lastly, before we move up, there is a little sticker on the side here. I will zoom into that and hopefully it'll focus eventually. There we go. It says American Electric has its part number, which is actually kind of nice because that might make uh, finding these ballasts easy. And you can see it's for 175 watts mercury vapor, and it hooks up to 240 volts only. Now it's a little cramped up here. I'd like to show you guys this uh, socket, but let's go ahead actually and 
skip up a little bit here. We're going to go ahead and take off the reflector here. Now to get the reflector off, there's a little slot right here. There's a little tension spring. You can see it kind of curls out of the front of this light. This end is screwed down. All you got to really do is pull back on this. If I can do it on camera here, you just want to pull that out like so. And then you actually have another bracket right behind the socket here. It's a little hard to see, but I don't know if you can see that. Actually, the I gotta fix that because that's coming undone. But you can see there's another slot in there. You kind of just want to push that up and out. And then your reflector should be a little easier to get out. It's pretty, they do make it very, very, very hard to get out of this light. With a little bit of fiddling around, you can get it out. Let me take a look at that. Oh no. I'm going to have to probably re-rivet that, but no big deal. Um, I will do that another time. Now the reflector here is pretty average. Um, it's just a pressed aluminum, nothing too special. It has a, a fiber material gasket, which has definitely seen some better days. It has a little bit of staining on it, but I will say that um, this one did at least stay intact for the amount of time it's been up. And I was at least able to take it off and clean it. It was a lot darker. And if you ever take these off, it's, they're very easy to actually reinstall. All you got to do is get some hot, uh, hot glue on here and glue it right back down flat where it was. And it'll stay on like it did. So, yeah. But, yeah, just pretty much uh, basic uh, pressed aluminum. But it is still really nice. However, for your uh, socket here, your socket is constructed of some really, really nice uh, brass material. And this part is the part where the reflector sits. Nice brass material. And you got another fiber gasket to create some insulation so no moisture gets inside. Go ahead and set those there. And here is our socket. First of all, let's take a look at that lovely American Electric uh, manufacturing sticker on the side. You can see it has a cat and a serial number there, and you can also see the American Electric logo from the 60s, and it also has it in some standard letters there. This is a tinfoil printed sticker, and I really love these tinfoil stickers, and I'm happy to say that this one is in wonderful shape, so really, really awesome. And just as awesome as that, like I said, this uh, lamp socket is made of all brass, but it, like most of these lamp sockets, it really doesn't have a lot of adjustment. Um, there isn't really an A, B, or C position that you can actually see on here. But if you do undo these two screws, you actually can uh, pivot the socket forward or back, depending on what you want your light distribution to be. However, um, since that's really all you can do, I don't really think it'll affect your light distribution much. But the option is there if you want it. And on the front here, you can see that uh, lovely uh, spring, tension spring thing they got going on here. This is, like I said, pretty much uh, the reflector just slots into that. And they have a nice curl going up here. And this is uh, where the latch latches onto. And you got, you got two really nice Phillips head screws right there. And this is all stainless steel. So it's all in really nice shape. And it's definitely lasted. Um, like everything else in this light, so I really like that. Now, it, this is very tight still, so it's a little bit hard to get all this uh, stuff out, but I will give it credit, though, that it's able to keep the reflector in as securely as it does, so I really love that. Now, after going over all this stuff, I will say that this is a very, very high-quality light. Definitely better than the Model 13 that came after it and the 113. This light is fantastic. Just everything about it really just screams high quality, and I really do like this light a lot. So I give this light a 10 out of 10 for how good a quality it is. Now, um, since we've looked at the insides, let's go ahead and get everything back together here and get my spot cleaned up, and let's go ahead and see this thing uh, lit up. Of course, when you put your reflector back in, just be very mindful of that tab there. You want to make sure that little thing slots in and then on the front here if I can 
get a good angle of that. All you gotta do is let me just pull back on this and bravo. Your reflector is in. Now one thing to note, sometimes when you take the ref uh, reflector off, these things will set back a bit. You can see there's kind of a rim right there. I'll turn this over to the side and show you if I can get this thing lifted up. These things are very tight. But you can see some rims in there. Basically this thing can actually pivot forward and back as well. As you can see I just pivoted it forward and now I pivoted it back. So when you're putting in your uh, reflector, or sorry, when you're putting your refractor on, you want to make sure you pivot those forward as normal. You just let it fall into those slots. And since this one is forward, I will try to show you. You want to pivot that back forward like so. And the same with that one. Pivot that one back forward. And now your refractor is secure. Alrighty. Now before I close the street light, I'm going to show you which lamp I'm going to use today. So today I'm going to just use a standard Sylvania 175 watt phosphor coated mercury vapor lamp. And this is actually a new one. Um, I got a bunch of these a while ago at work. Um, they were being thrown away. And these actually haven't really had very many hours on them. These are actually pretty much brand new still. Of course to close the light you just want to make sure you got your legs back here on the back of the light on the hinge and you just fold it over and push it together and listen for that snap and you know your light is shut. So yeah. Now that our street light is closed and ready to go let's go ahead and get it ready for lighting up. Okay now that I got my lamp in my street light um, I am now ready to get it ready to go. Since this is a 240 volt light, I actually have it plugged in already, but I'm going to let that little photo cell here turn on our light. And it's a good thing too because it is still just bright enough outside for the photo cell to um, kick off. So I'm going to go ahead and start turning off a couple lights here. And you'll notice I have it flipped the opposite way just because my all my cords are kind of over to the side and it'll make it a little bit easier to work with. So let's go ahead and start turning off some lights. Okay. This is my American Electric 1960s 13 triple zero 175 watts mercury vapor in one. Get it to three. Alrighty. Light has kicked on. Now I kicked on pretty fast. Uh, I did have the bulb come on a couple times, but you can see as it's starting up, it is a nice pinkish color, which is usually what you should get when you have a brand new phosphor coated bulb. Nice deep pink. So anyway, yeah, let's go ahead now and watch it warm up. Okay everyone, the street light is now at full brightness. It actually warmed up fairly quick since this bulb is pretty new, but let's go ahead and I'm gonna flip it on its side here. Let me get this camera ready. I'll show you how nice and bright it is. You can see my little eight inch Duracig here. You guys haven't seen yet that yet, but you'll see a video on that sometime soon. Anyway, here we go. Nice bright look. You can see the wonderful sine wave this gives off and that lovely lens I really love mercury vapor so much you can see that lens pattern is very nice I'm gonna pick up the camera here kind of go over it a little bit see the back side where Hall of Fame puts their wonderful details Let's go up on the front here doing kind of a weird twisty thing see that logo Ooh, yeah very nice and like I said this lens is very nice and clear quality and you can actually kind of see that bulb through that 
camera here, so it's definitely clear. You can probably see it better on the side. Yep, look at that. Wonderful. You see the logo in that green. Let me go ahead and set this back down. Uh, yes. Go ahead and set that back down here. I can show you how nice and bright it is. It really is very bright. I think it's a little bit brighter than your normal 175. And really, if you look around, my little display here, it's nicely lit because of this wonderful street light. Yeah, it's very bright. Everything lights up in here. Hello, street lights. Let me go ahead and set this back down here. Again, I'll show you that logo one more time. Very nice. I really like like this. Yep, you can see that wonderful American electric logo. And yeah, this is very nice. All right. Go ahead and Set it back down on the side there. Now let's open up those blinds. Uh oh, looks like my blinds broke. I just love cheap blinds. Let's go ahead and open the windows. Turn off the light. And voila! All right, everyone. That was my American Electric 13 Triple Zero. This is a very wonderful light, and I'm very happy to also have this light in my collection. I hope someday I can get the whole triple zero set. There's actually, like I said, some other lights that were made um, in the triple zero series. I love this light, it's awesome, and if you guys ever seen any of these wonderful triple zeros, they are definitely not rare, but um, these 13 triple zeros are sort of common, so if you, I guess if you see one, try to save it. These are lovely lights. So yeah, anyway, I thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe for more videos. And if you enjoyed this video, please add a like and leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think about these uh, 13 triple zeros that American Electric made in the 60s. Anyway, I hope you guys all have a good day and have fun collecting. Goodbye.